people, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Happy Monday! Thankfully, Newcastle United return to action not once but twice this week. Wednesday night away to Palace, Saturday at home to Sheffield United after what's felt like a long old boring weekend without the tune in action. But not long to wait. I'll be doing a live match reaction after the Crystal Palace game on Wednesday night, so stay tuned to that. And the match preview will be part of our live podcast tomorrow night, Tuesdays at 7 pm. Every single week, the live Magpie Channel podcast. So get involved in that. What I want to talk about in today's video is the Newcastle United Director of Football Search. We have narrowed it down to three candidates after they have been interviewed three times already. And they are set to be meeting with Yasia El Ramian, chairman of Newcastle United, for him to decide who gets the role. So we're going to talk about those three candidates very soon. But first of all, I have to touch upon Dan Ashraf and Sir Jim Ratcliffe and all the Man United fans including their new owner who is absolutely rattled by the fact that Newcastle United won't just give them Dan Ashworth won't just push him away eh? drop him off to Old Trafford himself there you go how about a director of football knee bother you know what I mean it's mad that they think we're just going to oh there you go no problem at all have him we don't want any money we don't want anything. You want to steal our director of football? Yeah, who we got in for this project long term. Now he wants to F off because his best mate's there at Old Trafford and he's yet off had more money in Manchester. Oh, wait, I need bother. There you go. Just have him. It's all right. Anything else you want? Do you want Isaac as well? Eh? Need Bruno because we've got the real Bruno and your Fernandez is shite. No, we're not going to let them just have Dan Asher. So we are waiting for a nice compensation fee, as you would expect. Do you know what I mean? So we're waiting for that. But Jimmy isn't too happy. This is what he had to say for BBC after the London Marathon yesterday. One of the biggest problems we've got in football is you get these new guys to, to come into the team, really capable people, but they're all on gardening leave. And so it takes you six months or a year or 18 months before they can... Just a small clip of what Ratcliffe had to say on the BBC yesterday. The full interview is on their website and Twitter or wherever you want to look for it. But that was the best part of it, of his little whinging and him trying to keep his head on, you know, primetime, daytime television when he's about to lose it, because he's not getting his own way. Oh, the billionaire is not getting his own way, and he wants to start losing the plot and whinging his head off. Oh, unlucky Jimmy boy, eh? Maybe splash some cash, eh? Maybe give us some of that. You know what I mean? You spent a couple of billion on Manu. You want to build a brand new stadium, don't you? I'm sure you can afford the 5 to 15 million compensation for Ashrath, no? Whinging. Yes, he is bloody garden all the time. Thanks to you lot, eh? His garden's massive now. He's going around the houses, not even asking for money. Just cutting people's grass for the crack. All over Newcastle. Knocked at mine the other day. Swelled him. Didn't really. But you know what I mean? He's non-stop with his gardening, Dan Ashrath. He loves a bit of gardening. Loves a bit of titch mosh. But it's your fault, Jimmy, that he is on garden leave. Because he'd still be at the tune waiting at St. James Park right now if it wasn't for you trying to steal him off our hands. So it's not our fault that you have to wait a few months or maybe a year or maybe more to get him if you don't want to pay for compensation. It's pretty sensible, really, doesn't it? It does make sense the process and what is happening and I see it all over social media as well. The Manchester United fans that just can't quite get their head around why Ashworth can't come yet. Because you haven't paid the bloody money. I can't understand why it's hard to understand. But these fans are so angry, so irritated. You know that game against Man United in a couple of weeks time at Old Trafford's not just going to be the battle for six but it's going to be a battle in itself because it's spicy. Because now they're still gutted and wound up that Ashworth can't get started because they know how big of a job They've got this summer to sort out their club because it's an absolute mess. Lucky, lucky escape for them in the FA Cup semi-final yesterday. Shout out Coventry City. They were the better side. They should have won. Crappy VR again. Offside so tight. Next season, they get the benefit of the doubt. That would have sent them through the final. Not that it matters because Man United will get slapped off Man City anyways again for the Cup final. So, and to be fair, I'll keep Ten Hag. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I hope Jimmy Ratcliffe keeps Ten Hag in charge and he doesn't get Ashworth for another 18 months at least. So they're in rot. Because the demise of that team is fantastic. And I am absolutely loving it. And yes, I am bitter from the 90s when they stole the league off us. Well, we kind of bottled it. 12-point lead. Terrible. The FA Cup final defeats, you know, all that stuff. But for me, good. Rot, my 90s. And I'm praying, I'm hoping, I will love it if we finish above them next season. As it stands, we will. And if we can manage to stay there and keep sixth place off them and finish above them. I don't think we've finished above them in the Premier League era. So if we could do that... It'll be a quality achievement, and I'm all here for it. And I'm all here for my United and Jimmy Ratcliffe throwing hoofs and the fans getting annoyed because they can't get Dan Ashrath. Like I've said, pay the money or enjoy him cutting his bushes. 
More importantly, where does that leave the real United? Newcastle United in their hunt for their director of football. Our replacement for Dan Ashrath. Now, the club have narrowed down to three candidates. Loads of people got interviewed. Maldini and the rest of them were getting interviewed. Now, I was a fan of this. I kind of wanted Maldini here just because I think the pull he would get to bring in players. I think loads of people would would love to, to have the interview with him, sit down with him and, and be impressed with his plans. So the Maldini one was appealing, but again, he's not going to be praying Maldini at left back, is he? So really, I want the best director of football, not the best defender. You know what I mean? Not one of the legends of the game. So the Maldini thing, apparently he is not in the top three candidates who have had three interviews across a couple of months now with a couple of different people at the club, Amanda Stavely, everyone else has been interviewing these blokes and now they are set to face Yasayil Ramian, the chairman of Newcastle United. It's like the apprentice this, isn't it? They've went through the process. They've went through the little side main. Now the interviews they get when they're telling the business is crap. They've went through them parts. Now they're up against Alan Sugar. Now they're up against Yasia. So it's up to them to impress him. So who is it that is going to face him in the next couple of weeks? Because Newcastle want this appointment done by the end of May. Now we know there's that soft transfer deadline. Clubs are calling it at the end of June because of financial fair play and, and profit and sustainability rules, by the 30th of June, we have to balance the books a bit. So someone might need to be sold by then, you bring someone in. So things need to happen, and we need that director of football in as soon as possible. And that's looking like it could be as little as just over a month's time. So by the end of May, Newcastle are going to be appointing their new director of football. Now, according to the Mail and I and loads of different outlets now, the leading candidates for this is Paul Mitchell, ex-Monaco director of football and he was at Spurs and Southampton as well. I'm going to really go into him in detail in a minute because I personally believe he will be appointed or he is at least the front runner at the moment. Then you've got Benfica's Rui Pedro Braz as well as Thiago Pinto. So these are names, very extravagant, you mean very exotic, you know, yeah, Pedro Braz, you know, Thiago Pinto, loves a Pinto, you know, it's a good name. They've both got good names, but how good's the CVs? I'm unsure on the other two that much. They haven't done loads in the game. So that's why I lean towards Mitchell, not Phil, Paul. Because for me, he has got incredible experience. And he's got a very, very impressive CV. Back at Southampton, you know, he brought in some top players like Sadio Mane. Uh, he's been at Spurs where he brought in some really, really good talents like obviously Hong Min Sun. And then he's went to Monaco where I'm hearing mixed things about Monaco. People are saying he wasted a bit of money at Monaco. I'd have to look into that a bit more, more in depth if he did get a point, because there's no point in me wasting my time and your time here saying, oh, they've done this and they've done that. It's on the three list at the minute, so there's three of them on that list. Like I see, the other two have done all right, and you like the likes of Portugal and across Europe, they've done well. And you know, the Ruby Pedro Braz sounds exciting, and Thiago Pinto's got the best name. But in terms of experience in Premier League as well, and we know what Eddie Howe and his his staff are like, they do like that Premier League experience for signing players, the likes of Anthony Gordon. So for me, I think they're going to like his experience that he's already done in this country and he is actually listed fourth best director of football in the world according to different websites and awards and stuff apparently he's right up there after man city's director of football and a couple of others so he is very highly sought after and funny enough he's one that a lot of man united fans wanted before they got dan ashworth because they might have thought ashworth is at newcastle and they couldn't be touched so i think mitchell will be an ideal replacement for dan ashworth i don't see the difference in them that much, if anything, Mitchell's CV looks a bit more impressive. I know Ashworth did well at England and West Brom and, and Brighton, but Mitchell's done really well in this country, especially at, at Southampton and Spurs, especially at Talent ID. I think he's really good at Talent ID, recruiting players, building a, building a club a bit as well with that philosophy and that style. So I think he could be keen. I think he'll be the one that gets it. If I'm looking at it from afar, and like I see not knowing loads about the other two candidates, the Braz and the Pinto, I would go for Mitchell. I just think he stands out a bit more and he would be suited to the club to work alongside, you know, your Darren Eels, Silverstones, Eddie Howe. So I think Mitchell could be the man. So I'm going to say that we'll be appointing Mitchell by the end of the day. I'm sticking my neck out there. You know what I'm like, people. I don't know about it. I'll say how it is. I'll, that's what, that'll be my pick. And then hopefully, if they do pick someone else, I'll be proven wrong and they, they're just as good, if not better. Because for me, I think the whole director of football thing is blown out of proportion a bit now, anyways. I think teams going after Ashraf and paying all this compensation for that, fine, do it, cheers. Because there's way more operations going around than just one man. So like I mentioned, you've got the Silverstones, the Eels, you know, Gadusi, Stavely, there's so many people behind the scenes that we don't even see or know about. You know, the, the Steve Nixon's the scout, uh, Eddie Howe's nephew, Andy Howe, 
loads of people behind doing loads of different jobs on a daily basis. It's not like the be all and end all. He's not like the god of the club and he's going to control everything. He's not. So get Mitchell in who's got great experience, great CV, work alongside Howe and everyone else. And I think we'll be absolutely sound. So we'll wait and see how they get on. Though all the, it's not my decision. You know what I mean? It's the Saudi Arabia's PIF decision. It's Ramian's decision. And we'll wait and see who does become director of football. And we'll wait and see how many more grass gets cut by Dan Ashworth. How many trees does he plant? How many bushes does he trim? How many hedges is he working on? You know, your garden must be amazing condition. Pristine. Green, green grass. That's what Ashworth's at. So, my United fans unlucky. Jimmy Ratcliffe unlucky. Pay the money and you can have him. Let me know in the comments who you would like to see as Newcastle United's new director of football. Subscribe to my channel TV and enjoy yourself.